Oh, what's Tucker Carlson have to say? Good things possible. We want a democracy to continue. But then everything changed. The main driver when the of fire that nation change, attack. You, was the corona pandemic. It simply became too dangerous to show up in person to vote. But think about that for a second. Three it doesn't really Alex make Jones, sense. If you can go to the grocery plan. store, and most people can and do, then you can go to a polling place. There's no medical reason that you can't vote in person. It's not inherently Six unsafe. Obviously. Now, Almost way. no one in the media. Well, the difference is like if there are viable alternatives, sacrifice it's kind of like the Tim Pool argument, right? And 20s. Like if there's a all viable the alternative places. to be able, being able to Bobby vote Wolf in person, chance. then why not do it? There is no other alternative to fucking not going to the grocery store because you die. You die if you don't eat food. Instead, we're going to let John Ossoff explain the answer. Ossoff is one of the Democrats on the ballot tonight in Georgia. He is an unusually oily, entitled young man who has never in his entire life, from what we can tell, done anything meaningful or impressive or even had a real job. He's got a list of credentials. He's literally like, if coronavirus is so serious, why not hunt for your food? Like, what the fuck, In dude? a world of shallow politicians, John Ossoff is lighter than air. He makes Beto O'Rourke look like Teddy Roosevelt. But he does know one thing. If you're worried about election fraud, you are a racist. Here he is in an interview yesterday. My opponent and the other Senator Kelly Leffler and Georgia Republicans have been filing lawsuit after lawsuit to purge the rolls, to make it harder for people to vote. It is an open attack on black voters in Georgia, and it's a disgrace. And it's I mean, he's right. An echo of the legacy. He's of literally Trump. right. Like, I, I love dunking oh, on John Ossoff as much as another guy, but like, if you're suspiciously purging mostly black and brown voters from the fucking voter rolls and 70% of whites vote for the fucking Republican in the state of Georgia, then maybe, just maybe, you're doing it I on fucking purpose. A fishing lodge with okay? My father when I was 18. Like, He's I think a big part of the, why Republicans get mad at this is like, literally because the world order. they're Didn't upset that it's being called racist. Instead, like, in maybe there should be a, a, another word for it. Like, because... It is undeniable that you're trying to prevent black people from voting because 80% of black people vote Democrat and 70% of white people vote uh, vote Republican. And that's precisely why Republicans do this. For making opposition like, maybe it's not because they think like black people are genetically inferior or something, but because they know black people vote Democrat instead of Republican. But it doesn't matter. You are literally doing it in a very racist way. The The... the what you're trying to do is discriminate against black people from voting. And the word we have for that is racist. They told us that in-person voting, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, even mispronouncing Raphael Kamala Harris's Warnock, name, Raphael a name, by the way, Warnock, she can't pronounce herself, Warnock, are all vestiges Warnock, of America's Warnock, racist history. Warnock, so what's the remedy, Warnock, Warnock, what's the remedy Warnock, for a history that's evil? Liberal, Raphael, no, the Warnock. fucking vestiges of America's racism is the fact that, for example, if, if, Radical liberal Raphael Warnock ends up winning. He will be the 11th black senator. That's racist as fuck. I mean, come on. That's not proportional. You can't say that like, oh, there's only 13% of the country is black, Hassan. Okay, 0.07% of senators historically have been black. Lost by more than 50,000 votes. So it's not even but fucking proportional. It's not Party, supposed to be proportional, but it's definitely vote. not proportional. Without voter suppression, Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. If this co country wasn't racist, Stacey Abrams would be governor. It was the voter suppression, particularly of African-American communities, that prevented us from having a governor, Stacey Abrams, right now. Yes. Stacey Abrams. Like, someone described to me why Brian Kemp, when he was running against Stacey Abrams, when he was the Secretary of State, literally looked at DMV statistics to mark see how many people actually wrote by fucking pencil rather than by computer when they were plugging in their names. And if names had apostrophes in them, purge them from the fucking voter rolls. Said, Please help whenever I had the name Raphael Warnock. Securing 12,000 fucking votes. Liberal. What is wrong with me? Like at least 12,000 people from the fucking voter rolls that way. And that's just, or was it 50? I don't remember. I think it was, maybe it was uh, less than 50. But if you have That's hyphens in your name, Alex oops, Jones. sorry, boom, fucking purge from the rolls.
Oh, it was 50k. Never mind. Yeah, I wonder why he did that. I wonder why, in every single instance of uh, voters getting that. purged in the fucking voter rolls, uh, do you have people literally looking to see what areas don't have DMVs, for example, or closing down DMVs in black neighborhoods and then implementing yeah, voter ID right. regulations? I wonder why that happens. <laughs> I wonder if he'll mention that Stacey Abrams' sister also denied one of the results in one of the counties where 4,000 votes were being purged. Um, yes, she ruled in favor of uh, the, the uh, purges from uh, taking place, uh, did, ruled against purges from taking place in two counties, but ruled in favor of purges happening in one. They were no longer in Georgia, therefore they couldn't vote in Georgia because they're not in Georgia. That's that not true. simple and obvious, but that standard... That's not true. 198,000 people that were taken off voter registration rolls had not moved. They had not moved at all. And yet, the, the uh, Secretary of State claimed that they had, with it, no evidence whatsoever, potentially a crime. The politics works. It goes without saying that the actual identities, the real identities of tonight's Democratic candidates are off limits. True things can't be spoken. That's the rule. Right. You can't talk about them. You can call Raphael Warnock, for example, a pastor, a Christian, a pro-choice Christian. But don't you dare mention the words he actually utters in church, his sermons. If you do that, CNN would like you to know you're probably a political operative working for the hard right. In fact, you're taking his words out of context. Reverend Warnock's pro-choice stance and his words from the pulpit, often taken out of context, have been the target of the fiercest Republican attacks. You all right? <laughs> often taken out of context. Okay, so what's the context? Well, in the interest of objectivity and fairness, we're going to play one of the clips that CNN just told you is being taken out of context. It's from one of Raphael Warnock's sermons a few years ago. As you listen to what we're about to play, try to imagine a context I hate him so in much. which this would be okay. Let's Dude, nothing gets me. Win. Look, I criticize Democrats all the time. I think they suck. Wait, hold on. I want to hear this. A man who has dominated the news and poisoned the discussion for months needs to repent. Then it is doubly true that a nation that can produce such a man and make his vitriol go viral needs to repent. America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Oh, America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Okay, and we've got time. God so let us America. know when you discover the missing context here. Oh, it's not hiding somewhere in the video. We just showed you the relevant parts right. of the video. Raphael Warnock doesn't say, just kidding, after his racist scream. I love that, like, he literally clip-chimped it regardless, refuses to look for nuance in what his sentiment is when he's talking about, like, clearly, an America that elevates Donald Trump to the highest office is an America that has a lot of problems, okay? And it is a white supremacist America. He said it's fucking racist. America is a racist country, months, okay? So... Turning around and like clipping that away and then doing the, oh, I'm so angry at what he's trying to say. I'm shocked, I tell you, face, as Tucker Carlson often does because he has no fucking arguments. Doesn't change that reality. Oh, this is a clip that's not out of context. We cut all the relevant bits. Those two things don't belong together, Tucker. If it's not out of context, why did you have to clip the relevant bits, bitch? Noise. If your personal achievements could fit comfortably in the ashtray of a sports car. At various points, Ossoff has claimed he once worked as a senior national security staffer on Capitol Hill, which is pretty funny because, in fact, Ossoff was what is Seven called in Washington a legislative correspondent. That job consists mostly of responding to letters from constituents. In other words, he was the mailboy. And not in a very impressive office, either. John Ossoff worked for a Georgia congressman called Hank Johnson, who was easily, hands down, ask anybody in Washington the single dumbest member of Congress. And that's saying a lot. Back in 2010, just in case you think we're overstating the case, Johnson, in a hearing which was on television, asked a Navy admiral with deep concern. Wait, what does that have to do with John Ossoff? Which is an island, not a floating platform, might capsize if... Wait, what does that have to do with John Ossoff? I mean, fuck John Ossoff, but like, what does that have to do with him? He asked the question. During a congressional hearing on the military's budget, Congressman Hank Johnson, Democrat... Wait. If John Ossoff is dumb by virtue of Switch. working for a person who asks dumb questions, 
And does that mean Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist because his main writer was outed as a white supremacist? Oh, wait. The main writer actually writes Tucker Carlson's okay. words, the white supremacist one that was fired. Oh, okay. That's infinitely more relevant in assessing whether or not Tucker Carlson is a fucking white supremacist than a dumb person hiring and someone dumb. who is, you know, maybe dumb or maybe not dumb. Interesting. Very cool. John Asa from applying to work with that man, Congressman Hank Johnson, and why would they deter him? That moment became a blueprint for John Asa's entire career. Lean into your mediocrity. Don't deny it. Embrace it. And when you're challenged, hide behind identity politics. That works. Hey, boys. You know, there is no, there is no better identity politics than literally photoshopping your opponent's nose into looking larger because you want to heighten how Jewish they are, as Purdue did. So that's identity politics, too, to like literally rile up and agitate the white identity politics loving racist fucks or Kelly Loeffler literally darkening radical liberal Raf uh, Raphael Warnock's skin in her attack ads against Raphael Warnock. That's identity politics. The difference is you are trained not to think that that's identity politics. Because it's the white identity politics. Months, that is never Can considered identity chat? politics when it's white people. Okay? It's only identity politics when it goes against white people. When it's non-white people. <laughs> That's just normal politics, brother. Because racism, unfortunately, is deeply embedded in the American DNA. In American politics. Absolutely blows my mind that there are left-wingers that think Tucker is okay. Yeah, those people are fucking brain dead, okay? They are fucking brain dead. I'm sorry. If you like Tucker Carlson, uh, you... Well, they're not brain dead. They're just very, very privileged, okay? Because, like, Tucker Carlson is very clearly a racist piece of shit. I'm sorry. Like, when you yeah. call immigrants unwashed, dirty, disease-ridden, you're not a leftist. You're not a progressive. You're just straight the fuck up a racist piece of shit and guess what hey there were other people who fake did the fake left-wing economic populism in an effort to drive home their nefarious agenda that they truly cared about which was nationalism Tucker Carlson was not the first and he probably will not be the last that other person that I'm referencing is literally Adolf Hitler okay I'm not saying Tucker Carlson is literally Hitler, but he is certainly Today, taking a couple of pages out of Hitler's book. Talking about how economic day. populism, albeit fake, is really important, but those who deserve it. And those who deserve it are those who are Americans, American citizens, born on this soil. You know, just like the Germans said, the folkish were those who deserved the, the uh, property rights and that uh, those who were not folkish did not deserve it. Ultimately, of course, Tucker Carlson, who is a beneficiary of the Swanson frozen food dynasty, has always and will always support corporations, just like Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party supported corporations. Because fascism has nothing to do with workers' rights. Fascism has everything to do with maintaining the current hegemonic order. And that order ends up having those who own capital at the top. That's why communists and socialists Fingers have always historically fought against fascists fascist extremist and not side by side. Hash slinging, sash bringing we, we continue to assume that's the early voting Hassel. that's being counted. I just want Luff, uh, I just want Warnock and fucking Oss off the wind just so I can see these fucking conservative dipshits cry, dude. Nothing, nothing. And I mean, nothing gives me more happiness. I don't give a fuck if John Ossoff is going to be a moderate shill. I don't fucking care right it's okay. just at this stage i just want to watch conservatives fucking cry like they have been at the stop the steal rallies that's all i want i want to see them experience pain our old chelsea and ironically back. that pain will end up helping them in the long run because if they even get two thousand dollars in extra uh cash for example as a consequence of democrats winning the majority if they accidentally end up doing the right Anyone thing for once the democrats they're still the republicans are still going to get it I don't care though. I want them to suffer 
and I want them to suffer while they're getting, I don't know, their pre-existing conditions taken care of, for example, because if it were off to the fucking Republican Party, that never would happen. Just like, I want to give the Nazis health care, okay? Because Medicare for all means for everyone, okay? I want to give the racists health care. I want to force health care on them. I don't give a SMS fuck. Says, I want to force be better Abbott. social security payments on all of those racist fucks, okay? Whether you like it or not, motherfucker, you're going to have it and you're going to enjoy it. You are going to have a more comfortable existence, whether you like it or not. Fuck you!